So the results of uh, Keynote 189, um, I would call that the practice changing um, because it establishes a new paradigm and a new standard of care for the majority of patients we see in the clinic. Again, these are patients who do not have a molecularly driven tumor um, and previously would treat them with chemotherapy alone followed by immunotherapy. Uh, but because the study firmly establishes that adding pembrolizumab to chemotherapy is more superior in terms of PFS response and overall survival, I think it makes it the standard of care for a majority of our patients. The question is in the nuances of this study. For instance, in patient population with a uh, PD-L1 expression greater than 50%, it is not clear to me that adding chemo to Pembro buys us a lot more over pembrolizumab alone, and we have that data from earlier trials that were conducted in that particular patient group. So for me, uh, if I have someone with at least a 50% PD-L1 expression, pembrolizumab remains the standard of care without having to add chemo therapy. Patients that fall in between the 1 to 49 percent, I think they are definitely having a lot of advantage uh, from this combination. Patients with less than 1 percent PD-L1, even though the PFS benefit was not significantly better, I think the overall resp uh, response rate and survival was better. So in a scenario where I'm faced with a patient that has a significant burden of disease, a lot of symptoms from their lung cancer, I think it's hard not to use a combination that gives me a higher response rate uh, than chemotherapy alone because that is the patient population that needs that reduction in the amount of tumor, uh, re reducing the symptoms and all of that. So I think overall it makes it a very usable um, uh, combination for a majority of our patients. There was a sea change in our attitude towards use of chemotherapy with immunotherapy uh, from uh, the data that was published previously with Keynote 21. Keynote 189 demonstrated that the benefit, the early benefit we saw was confirmed in this study. Therefore, it allows the use of this combination regimen in all settings. Of course, the use of this regimen in patients with low PDL1 expression comes with some caveats. This is an area that still requires improvement. Therefore, using this regimen without hesitation in patients with expression that is higher than 50% and patients with expression between 1 and 49 percent, I think should be the norm. For patients with low expression, there is still benefit, but I believe that this is an area where research will be very active. As far as I'm concerned, the results of Kino 189 are unprecedented and astounding, and from my standpoint, really do define a new standard of care particularly for those with uh, either no PDL ex uh, one expression or zero to 49 percent. It becomes a bit more controversial and problematic for those with 50 percent or higher expression. Again, this is the standard of care for non-squamous in the absence of molecular aberrations. If we do the math, eliminating squamous cell, eliminating patients who have uh, EGFR mutations or ALK translocations, eliminating patients who really aren't candidates for pemetrexid, which includes older adults with renal compromise, we're probably talking about 50% of the advanced non-small cell population. Still, it's a significant percentage. Uh, in the 50% or higher group, we have uh, equally relevant and almost as promising phase three data for pembrolizumab alone, single agent, versus standard uh, chemotherapy. And uh, one has to wonder whether adding chemo to Pembro in that cohort really enhances uh, long-term survival. I would have uh, equipoise personally to enroll my patients on a prospective randomized phase three trial comparing Pembro to the triplet.